In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate the cell potential using the nurse equation. Now, there's two equations that you need to be familiar with. Here's the first one. The non-standard cell potential is equal to the standard cell potential minus RT over NF times the natural log of Q. R is the energy constant, which is 8.3145. T is the temperature in Kelvin. N is basically the number of electrons in the balanced half reactions. It's the ratio between the moles of electrons per mole of substance. F is Faraday's constant. It's 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons. So typically, you need to use this equation if the temperature is not at 25 degrees Celsius or 298 Kelvin. Now let's say if it is, you can still use that equation or you can use this version. The non-standard cell potential is equal to the standard cell potential minus 0 0.0591 divided by n times log q. Now you might be wondering what is q? q is the reaction quotient it's equal to the ratio of the products divided by the ratio of the reactants. I mean, it's one single ratio. It's the ratio of the products to the reactants. The same way you would calculate K is basically the same as Q, but Q is associated with the initial concentrations as opposed to the equilibrium concentrations. Now, what is the difference between E and E0? E represents the non-standard cell potential, whereas E0 represents the standard cell potential. At E0, all the concentration of the ions that participate in the reaction is one mole per liter. For non-standard E, the concentrations do not equal 1m as in the case of the problem that we have. The concentration of aluminum is 0.1, and for copper uh, 2 plus is 2.5. So the cell potential is going to change. So here's a question for you. Do you think the non-standard cell potential, E, how is it going to relate to the standard cell potential, E0? Is it going to be greater than, equal to, or less than? Now, it's not going to be equal to because the concentrations are not standard. It's not one mole per liter. So is it going to be greater than or less than? What's going to happen if we increase the concentration of the reactants? We know that the reaction is going to shift to the right. So it's going to become more spontaneous in the forward direction. For a spontaneous reaction, the cell potential is positive. So if it's shifting to the right, it's becoming more positive, which means that the cell potential is going to go up. If you decrease the concentration of the reactants, it's going to shift to the left, making it spontaneous in the reverse direction or non-spontaneous in the forward direction. So the cell potential becomes more negative, less positive, so it decreases. Likewise, if you increase the concentration of the products, it shifts to the left, the cell potential decreases. If you decrease the concentration of the products, it's going to shift to the right, and the cell potential is going to increase. So therefore, you need to know that increasing the reactants and decreasing the products will increase the cell potential. And decreasing the reactants or increasing the products will decrease the cell potential. So the non-standard cell potential All right, it did not want to erase the whole thing. The non-standard cell potential is greater than the standard cell potential whenever you have a large amount of reactants or a small amount of products. The non-standard cell potential is less than the standard cell potential if you have a small amount of reactants and a large amount of products. 
So if we look at our problem here, we have a huge amount of reactants. Cu2 plus is a reactant, and we only have a small amount of product. So therefore, having a small amount of product and a high amount of reactants means that the non-standard cell potential is going to be greater than the standard cell potential. So we should have an answer that's greater than 2 volts. So now let's go ahead and calculate it. Now the first thing that we need to do is calculate Q. So Q is basically the products over the reactants. So we have the aluminum 3 plus ion, which is a product. And we have a 2 in front of it, so that's going to be squared. And then the copper 2 plus ion, that's a reactant. So keep in mind, you can't include any liquids or solids. They should not be included in the reaction quotient expression. Now the coefficient is 3, so the exponent is going to be 3 here. So we can't include these two solids. And besides, we don't have the concentration for it because it's a solid. The amount of Al3 plus that we have is 0.1. And for Cu2 plus, it's uh, 2.5. 0.1 squared divided by 2.5 raised to the third power. That's equal to 6.4 times 10 to the minus 4. So that's Q. Now the next thing that we need to calculate is N. So let's take this uh, net reaction and separate into half reactions. So we have two aluminum atoms on the left side turn into two aluminum cations. How many electrons do we need to balance it? The total charge on the left is 0 because there's no charge. On the right, it's 2 times 3, which is 6. So 6 electrons are required. Now for the other half reaction, the reduction half reaction, we have 3 Cu2 plus on the left, and on the right, 3 Cu. So 3 times 2 is 6. We need 6 electrons on the left. So therefore, N is equal to 6 in this case. Now that we have the value of n, we can calculate the non-standard cell potential. So let's write the equation first. It's equal to the standard cell potential minus 0 0.0591 divided by n times log q. Since the temperature is at 298 Kelvin or 25 degrees Celsius, we don't need to use the other equation. Only when the temperature is different should we use it. So this is going to be 2 minus 0 0.0591 divided by 6 times log of Q, where Q is this number. So that's 6.4 times 10 to the minus 4. And just go ahead and type it in exactly the way you see it. So I got 2.03 volts. As you can see, the non excuse me, <laughs> the non-standard cell potential is greater than the standard cell potential because we have a large amount of products and I mean a large amount of reactants and a very small amount of products. Number two, a galvanic cell is made using 0.25 molar zinc sulfate and an unknown amount of copper 2 sulfate. The cell potential is 1.05 volts at 50 degrees Celsius. What is the concentration of copper 2 sulfate in the cathode compartment? And also, how many grams of CuSO4 are dissolved if the cathode compartment contains 250 milliliters of solution? So let's begin by finding N. So let's write this in terms of half reactions. To balance the oxidation half reaction, two electrons are needed. And to balance the reduction half reaction, two electrons are needed as well. So clearly we can see that N is equal to 2. Now the next thing that we need to do is convert the Celsius temperature into Kelvin. So that's going to be 50 degrees Celsius plus 273 
so the temperature is 323 Kelvin. Now what equation should we use? Because the temperature is not at its standard value of 298 Kelvin, we need to use this one. E is equal to E naught minus 0 0.0591 divided by, actually not that one, minus RT over NF times the natural log of Q. This is the one that we need to use. Now, we have the concentration of the zinc 2 plus ion. As we can see, it's 0 0.25. What we need to do is calculate the concentration of the copper 2 plus ion. That's going to be equal to the concentration of copper sulfate. Because the copper 2 plus ion and copper sulfate, they're in a 1 to 1 ratio. In order to find the missing concentration, we need to calculate the value of Q, the reaction quotient. So how can we go ahead and do that? How can we go about doing that? How can we find it? Well, first, let's rearrange the equation. Let's subtract both sides by E0. So we're going to have negative RT over NF times the natural log of Q. Next, let's multiply both sides by negative NF so that those will cancel. And on the left side, it's going to be negative NF times E minus E0. So that's equal to RT LNQ. At this point, let's divide both sides by RT. So LNQ is equal to everything on the left side. Now, to get Q, we need to convert the logarithmic expression into its exponential form. E raised to everything on the left side is going to equal to Q. So the reaction quotient Q is E raised to the negative NF times E minus E naught over RT. That's the equation that we need to use to calculate Q. Once we have Q, we can determine the missing concentration. So we know N. N is a negative, no, well, N is 2, but we have a negative sign in front of that. F is 96,485. The non standard cell potential is 1.05. The standard cell potential is 1.1. R is the energy constant, 8.3145. And T is the temperature in Kelvin, which is 323. Now, let's go ahead and plug everything in. So you should get... 36.33. Now keep in mind, Q is equal to the ratio of the products divided by the reactants. So the zinc 2 plus ion is the product, and copper 2 plus is the reactant. We can't include any solids. The coefficient for both of these ions is 1, so it's raised to the first power. So the concentration for zinc we have is uh, 0.25. So now we got to calculate the concentration of copper. So Q, which is 36.33, that's equal to 0.25 times the concentration of Cu2+. So you can cross multiply if you want, but the concentration of Cu2+, when you uh, do the algebra, it's going to be 0.25 divided by 36.33. So you should get 0 0.00688. So that is the concentration of the copper 2 plus ion, which is the same as the concentration of copper sulfate. 
So notice that the amount of product, which is represented by zinc, is significantly greater than the amount of reactant. So we have a very, a relatively high amount of product and a relatively low amount of reactant. And that's why E is less than E0. Anytime the non-standard cell potential is less than the standard cell potential, it means you have a relatively low amount of reactant, in this case copper, or a relatively high amount of product, in this case zinc. Now let's clear away a few things and let's focus on part B. How many grams of copper sulfate are dissolved in the cathode compartment if it contains 250 milliliters of solution? So keep in mind the concentration of copper sulfate is 0 0.00688. So let's just keep that there. Now, in order to get the grams of copper sulfate, we need to find the molar mass. The molar mass of copper is 63.55. The molar mass of sulfur is 32.07. And we have four oxygen atoms each with a molar mass of 16. So let's add up these values. So you should get 159.62. And that's grams per mole. So let's start with the concentration of the solution. So that's in moles per liter. And the volume is 250 milliliters. We need to divide that by 1,000 to convert it to liters. So it's 0.25 liters. So the unit liters will cancel. And now we need to convert it to grams. So we can use the molar mass. There's 159.62 grams of copper sulfate per one mole of copper sulfate. So the unit moles cancel and we're just going to end up with grams. So it's 0 0.00688 times 0 0.25 times 159.62. So the final answer is 0.2745 grams of copper sulfate dissolved in 250 milliliters of solution. Number three. If the cell potential is 0.67 volts at 25 degrees Celsius, what is the pH of the solution? In order to find the pH of the solution, we need to calculate the H plus ion concentration. That's the only thing that we don't have. We have the concentration of every other ion, except H plus. All the ions are in the aqueous phase. Water is in the liquid phase, so we're not going to include that and a reaction quotient expression. So before we calculate Q in order to find H plus, let's, let's find N first. So we have 5 Fe2 plus turning into 5 Fe3 plus. So it's an oxidation reaction. The electrons will be on the right side. The total charge on the left side is 10. The total charge on the right side is 5 times 3, which is 15. So we need to add 5 electrons to the right side to balance the charge. Because 15 minus 5 is 10. So we can see that N is 5. But let's check the other um, half reaction, the oxidation half reaction. So all of the atoms are balanced in this reaction. The total charge on the left is negative 1 plus 8, which is positive 7. On the right, it's positive 2. These two numbers differ by 5. So we've got to add 5 electrons to decide with the higher charge. So clearly we can see that N is indeed 5 in this example. So let's go ahead and write that here. Since the temperature is at 25 degrees Celsius, we can use this equation. E is equal to E0 minus 0 0.0591 divided by N times log Q. So let's isolate Q in this example. So let's subtract both sides 
by Enoch. In the next step, let's multiply both sides by negative n. So it's negative n e minus e naught, which equals positive 0 0.0591 times log q. So when we multiply both sides by negative n, on the right side, the negative signs will cancel, and n will cancel as well. So now we got to divide both sides by 0 0.0591. So it's going to be negative n e minus e naught divided by 0 0.0591. By the way, you could distribute the negative on the inside if you want. And you could write it as n times positive e naught minus e, if you prefer that. The base of log, if there's no number written, it's 10. So 10 raised to everything on the left is equal to q. So therefore, q is 10 raised to the negative n e minus e naught divided by 0 0.0591. So that's the equation that you need in order to calculate q. So let's go ahead and use it. So it's going to be 10 raised to the n is 5 in this example. The non-standard cell potential, that's 0.67. The standard cell potential is uh, 0.74. And let's divide that by 0 0.0591. So all of this is on the exponent of 10. So keep that in mind. Now let's go ahead and plug this in. If I was you, I would type it exactly the way you see it on the board, all at once. I got a very big number. I'm going to try that again, just to make sure I typed in everything. I got 835,922. But let's try that one more time. So that's Q in this example. Now that we have the value of Q, let's write an expression that relates Q to the reactants and products. So it's going to be the products over the reactants. So we have the permanganate 2 plus ion, which has a coefficient of 1. And as a product, we have Fe3 plus, and the coefficient is 5. So we got to raise it to the fifth power. As a reactant, we have the Fe2 plus ion, which is also raised to the fifth power. And we have the permanganate ion, which is raised to the first power. And the H plus ion, which is raised to the eighth power. So all of that is equal to Q. So 835,922 is equal to so the permanganate ion is 0 0.01. And then Fe3 plus, the concentration for that is 0 0.05 raised to the fifth power. And then Fe2 plus, that's 0.25 raised to the fifth power. And permanganate is just 0.3. So our goal is to get the H plus concentration. So at this point, we really don't need this information anymore. So let's go ahead and just make some extra space. What we need to do is cross multiply. So 1 times 0 0.01 times 0 0.05 to the fifth, I'm just going to write it out. And that's equal to Q, which is this large number, times 0.25th 
or 25 raised to the fifth times 0.3 times h plus raised to the eighth power. So we need to divide both sides by everything except h plus. So go ahead and type this in. So I got 1.276 times 10 to the minus 11 is equal to h plus raised to the eighth power. So now what we need to do is raise both sides to the 1 over eighth power. So we can get h plus to the first power. So the eighth root of that number, or just raise it to the 1 over 8, is going to be 0 0.04347. So that's the concentration of H+. Plus. Now that we have it, we could find the pH of the solution, which is negative log of the H plus concentration. So it's about 1.36. It's relatively acidic. So that's the answer. Now let's talk about how to derive the Nernst equation. So we need to start using this equation. The non-standard delta G value is equal to the standard delta G value plus RT ln Q. Delta G is equal to negative NFE. So the standard delta G value is negative NFE naught. Now what about the natural log of Q? Well, you need to be familiar with the change of base formula. Log base A of B is equal to log b divided by log a. And you can add a new base, which we'll call c. So the natural log of q is going to be equal to. Now the base of a natural log is always base e. So this is going to be log q divided by log e. And so we're going to make it base 10. That's our c value. It has to be the same in order for it to work. Now, E is a number. It's 2.71828 with some more numbers repeated. So log E, or log of 2.71828, if you type that in your calculator, it will give you 0 0.43429. So therefore, ln Q is equal to log Q divided by 0.43429. So let's go ahead and replace L and Q with that result. So now we're going to have log Q divided by 0.43429. At this point, we're going to divide everything by negative NF. So these will cancel and those will cancel. So the non-standard cell potential is equal to the standard cell potential minus, so basically I move this negative sign over here. So it's minus RT divided by NF. You know, I'm going to use this for now, LNQ. So this gives us the first version of the nurse equation. So I'm not going to replace this yet. I should have replaced it later. So basically I put it back in this form. So now to get the other version, let's go ahead and replace LNQ with this value. R is 8.3145. T is going to be 298 Kelvin. F is 96,485. And then we're going to have log Q divided by 0 0.43429.
So if you type this in the calculator, on top, 8.3145 times 298, and in the bottom, using parentheses, 96,485 times 0.43429. That will give you 0 0.0591. So you're going to get this form of the nurse equation. It's going to be E naught minus 0 0.0591 log Q divided by N. So that's the second form. But to get the first form, don't replace L and Q until you get to this form. Once you get to this part, then you could replace L and Q with log Q over 0.43429. And that'll give you the other version of the nurse equation. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and have a great day.